I am going to begin by reading the last thing my child wrote before he went home and killed himself. He released this online at 4.54 p.m. on December 15th and by 10 a.m. on December 16th, he was dead. Kelly Robinson, president of the Human Rights Campaign, the nation's largest lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer civil rights organization, just finished testifying before the U.S. House of Representatives Oversight and Reform Committee about the rise of anti-LGBTQ plus extremism and violence in the United States in the wake of the recent Club Q shooting. At the hearing, Robinson discussed the threats facing the LGBTQ plus community, including a rise in online harassment, anti-LGBTQ plus state legislation, threats of violence and attacks on queer spaces and people, particularly black and brown transgender women. Robinson's testimony came one day after HRC released a report on the correlation between online harassment and offline violence, finding online harassment campaigns against 24 different hospitals and healthcare providers across 21 states. It also comes one day after the historic Respect for Marriage Act was passed into law. Violence and discrimination against LGBTQ plus communities is the tragic result of a society that devalues our lives, particularly the black and brown, transgender and gender non-conforming people. And this hate and violence is on the rise. Fueled by nearly unfettered access to guns and political extremism and rhetoric that is deliberately devised to make our communities less safe, less equal, and less free. Violence has become a lived reality for so many in our community. And this violence does not happen in a vacuum. Anti-LGBTQ LGBTQ plus lawmakers' efforts directly increase the risk of violence facing our communities today. State lawmakers have advanced an onslaught of anti-LGBTQ plus bills to restrict where and how we can freely and openly be our true selves. In 2022, 344 of these bills were introduced across 23 states. These bills often target the youngest among us harming children and families. These bills target the trained professionals like doctors and teachers who care for them. The recent increase in anti-LGBTQ rhetoric amplified by lawmakers is growing attacks on our community in state houses, in schools, and on street corners. I will not read the rest of it, but I will tell you. I'm gonna read some of it, I have time. 
Yesterday, we released a report identifying 24 different hospitals and 22 states following misleading and inflammatory social media posts about gender mutilation of children. Just last week, California State Senator Scott Wiener himself, a gay Jewish man, was the target of a bomb threat because of his work supporting trans youths and families. Included in the threat were two words, pedophilia and rumor. We must take action. I'm not gonna skip this one. A Texas pastor uploaded a video asserting that gay people should be lined up against the wall and shot in the back of the head. I remember the day that one came through because my child called me from work and said, Mom, this is getting really scary. He ends it by saying we must take action to prevent further violence and harm against LGBTQ plus communities. First, social media companies, lawmakers, and other stakeholders must establish guidelines and practices to fight disinformation and hate online. Second, we must pass the Equality Act to level the playing field and ensure LGBTQ people are protected from discrimination. And third, and oh my God, do we need to do this. We must pass common sense gun safety measures to protect our communities from the most extreme acts of violence. Ultimately, we must all work to repudiate anti-LGBTQ rhetoric and falsehoods in the strongest possible terms. And then he ends, the last thing my child wrote to anybody and published it to the world because our lives are quite literally on the line. And then he ends with thank you. So what are we doing here today? Why are we here? To say this is a bill protecting children is completely disingenuous. And to call this a parent's rights bill is an absolute despicable affront to me personally. We are denying families, their physicians, and their therapists the right to make medically informed decisions for their families. Not a single reputable society, national medical society in this country supports what we are doing today. The data at this point is unequivocal. The misinformation is appalling, appalling that you allow, allow this disinformation to stand. I get, I get emails in my inbox telling me to stop the genital mutilation of minors in the state. What? And I won't say the word, a boogeyman that you can't stand up to your own constituents and tell them this has never happened in this state. This is against every medical guideline. They are scaring you on purpose because they need you scared. They need your support. And they cannot stand up and be strong enough leaders to lead. 
So instead, they use fear tactics and misinformation, intentional misinformation. And I could talk about the young woman that came here. I won't. Senator from Jefferson, so, 26. The debate has been limited to 10 minutes per side. You have exhausted that of the opponents to the bill. Please conclude. Can I read four more lines, sir? Any other members seeking recognition for the purpose of question or discussion on the bill? The opponents having exhausted the time pursuant to Rule 12, any other members who are proponents of the bill would be limited to four minutes and 30 seconds. Seeing none, no other members seeking recognition. The matter for the body is final passage, Senate Bill 150, the governor's veto notwithstanding. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Senator Berg. Senator from Jefferson 26, please cast your vote, then explain. You have three minutes. Thank you, sir. I vote no. So what are we really doing here today? We today, under a parent's rights bill of some sort, are assuring that our young gay and trans students do not have a safe adult at school that they can reach out to. We are making sure that they cannot do that without fear of being outed. We are making sure that students cannot see themselves in our art or our literature. We are trying to erase them. They exist. They deserve to exist. And if having a gay child in your student's class or a trans child in your student's class makes you uncomfortable, then don't put your children in public school because public school is for the public. Students cannot pee, poop, or change clothes. And you know, sir, Senator, from District, Senator from Taylor. If you knew anything, sir, about gender dysphoria, you would know that children with gender dysphoria will not change in a room with mirrors. You have to take the mirrors off the wall for them because seeing their own body upsets them so much. Do you honestly think one of these children is going to intentionally let somebody else see them without clothes? That would be a nightmare. That is part of gender dysphoria. I vote no, and I will say to the people who are watching, this fight is not over. You know the ACLU has promised to file today. You know the Kentucky Hospital Association, the KMA are gonna file. You know this will go to court. Children, do not give up hope. Do not hurt yourself, and God forbid do not go out and hurt somebody else over this. We will get this right for you. Give us time and don't do anything drastic.